The IP01 multifunctional walkie-talkie made for an iPhone. Starts now. Uh, good afternoon. My name's Jason. I'm KC5HWB. If this is your first time to join us here, please can click on the subscribe button below so that you can keep up with all the videos that we post on this channel. Anything and everything that is new in amateur radio. The IP01 multifunctional walkie-talkie. These guys actually approached me and asked me to do a review on their phone case that has a built-in right there. Um... A built-in walkie-talkie. I mean, it's 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 a standalone walkie-talkie by itself, and then you can drop your your iPhone in here. Now, I don't have an iPhone, and I told them this. I said I don't really I don't have an iPhone, and they're like, um, "That's okay. It works as a standalone. We'd still like you to review it." Okay, that's cool. So I'm not going to get everything out of this video that I could if I had an iPhone. I asked them, "Do you make one for an Android?" Because there's a lot more Android users in the world than there are iPhone users, for a good reason, by the way. I know some of you guys like iPhones, and that's fine. I'm not here to debate whether Android or iPhone is better. Um, the fact is, this is only made for iPhones at the time of this recording. And I don't have an iPhone, um, so I can't drop in and show you what the app looks like in anything. But it does work as a standalone walkie-talkie. It comes with uh, its 16-channel uh, memories, which is kind of low, and it has a 3,500 milliamp-hour battery pack built into this case. The iPhone would just fit right there. You got port for your camera right there, PTT button on the side which activates the actual in a built-in walkie-talkie. It's got an up-down arrow right there and then of course on it's got a screen on the back. Your iPhone face would be here and it's got a screen on the back so you can show what channel you're on. Um, it has a V uh, it has four buttons here, up, down, fun, F U N, which is their abbreviation for function. So if I go into function I can go into menu volume, squelch, uh, CTCSS, uh, receive and transmit, transmit power is high, I have high and low, two settings, narrow band or wide band, save memory channel, beep on or off, uh, step, 25 kilohertz is set to default, let's see what that does. I can go down to 5 kilohertz, and I can also go to 6.25 kilohertz. It will not go down to 2.5. I can go to 12.5 kilohertz, though, and I do 25 kilohertz, so that's good to know. Store channel, delete channel, uh, timeout timer, language. It came to me in English. Volume and squelch. Yeah, that's back to the, 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 back to, um, the beginning where the volume was. So... And that's all done through these little buttons right here on the bottom and the screen on the top that tells you what you're on. Now, what I can't find right now, manual, comes with two antennas, uh, this little stubby antenna here and then a longer one. It comes with a plug that goes USB to, um, to iPhone, really. This is a USB port in the bottom of this case. So you can USB that to your iPhone. I don't think you have to do that permanently to, to use it on a normal basis, but um, I can't test it because, as I said, I don't have an iPhone. It also comes with a regular USB to USB cable so I can plug it into the computer if I wanted to. Um, what I want to know, mainly, any of you who uh, have been watching my channel for a long time, for a, for a while, about Three years ago, I posted about a, a, a device called an Alianza, which was going to be multi-device uh, supported. Several, uh, it would have had an iPhone, several Android phones. I think at the time they were talking about BlackBerry. That's how long ago it's been. And um, where you could just drop your smartphone into a case like this. You order a case specifically for whatever phone you've got, drop it in here, and download their app, and then you control everything from the actual app. This one's a little bit different because it does work as standalone. My understanding for the Alianza project, they ran a Kickstarter which never funded, so I don't think the project ever got off the ground. And then R Finder came out shortly after that. And R Finder does everything that Alianza was going to do plus a lot more. 
because uh, Alianza, along with this, was is just analog. This is just analog only. There's no uh, digital, no DMR, no Fusion, D-Star, whatever. Um, I'm trying to find out if it's dual band because it doesn't really say. It comes up with 440. comes up at 440. Um, in VFO, you can go from VFO mode to... Let's go back to memory mode. All the memory channels were in the four. Yeah, it's got 16 channels programmed to it. All of them are, are between 400 megahertz. Actually, they're all between 450 and 469. So it certainly looks like Yeah, it goes it goes from 400 to 480 megahertz on the screen. As far as I can tell, it is... I was looking on their website to see if it said there. It really doesn't. Let's see. It's called a number one IP01 phone. Not the greatest name in the world, I don't think. But... Um, Yep, right here it sells uh, size is IP, IP, uh, IPX, and it comes for with a five uh, available for a five and a half inch screen or a four point seven inch screen. Comes in yellow, like this. Uh, they're calling this yellow, and it comes in also a green color, and it's only about fifty six ninety nine. I'll put a link in the YouTube video down there. You guys can go check it out if you like. It is a neat looking. It, it's very heavy duty. It's real solid. I, I like the way it's constructed. It's got a nice leather case on it right here that fits around your iPhone. It's got a standard SMA connector on the top right there. SMA. This is an SMA female with an SMA male antenna. Uh, so nothing weird there. Um, and then it's got, um, you know, come to think of it, this cable right here is probably your charging cable. Plug it into a standard iPhone charger with that, and then you can interface it to your computer with this cable. So, um, really neat idea. It's only 57 bucks. Um, probably have to pay for shipping because you're. Uh, it's on GearBeast.com. So, again, I'll put the link down there in, in the in the uh, in the comments below, or in the description of the YouTube channel. If anybody has used this, let me know. Um, I sure as heck, yeah, it says frequency range 400 to, four, actually this says 400 to 470. Is that what I said a minute ago? No, it says, this one goes to 480. Now, maybe it doesn't transmit that high. I'm not going to try to transmit on it. Maybe it doesn't transmit that high, but it's advertised as 400 to 470 megahertz. 16 channels, output power is about 1.9 watts on high and about 0 0.2 watts on low. Okay. Um... Voltage is 3.7 volt, 3.7 volt. That's why it's not dual band. And the battery's 3,500 milliamp hour. So it ought to last you s uh, several days, 3,500 milliamp hour, unless you're doing it for, um, unless you're keying up a lot. So that is the IP01 multifunctional wireless handheld walkie-talkie for the iPhone. So... Really cool. I mean, hey, you know what? Stuff like this is really what this channel is about. What is new in amateur radio? That's my tagline. Um, some of it, some of the stuff I like. Some of the stuff I'm not really into so much. I would be into this. And I would love if they were to make one for my Samsung Galaxy S9 for me to drop in. Maybe they will eventually. I don't know. I mean, for 57 bucks, how can you go wrong? It's Now, is it FCC approved? Probably not. It doesn't have any, anything in here. That's why I don't want to key up on it. It doesn't have anything in here about being FCC approved. And with the new crackdown that the FCC is doing on some of these imported radios. But I've always held, I'm not telling you to go out and break the law, but I've always held a personal belief that if you abide by the law and only transmit what you're supposed to transmit and don't act like a jack wagon on the air, the FCC's got a lot of stuff to do right now. They're not going to come knocking on your door saying, do you have any contraband radios in your house? Come on. They've fined a lot of people for being jack wagons on the air and still haven't been able to shut them up on the air. If you don't believe me, go go to turn on your HF rig, go to 20 meters, and go to 14.313. Listen to that for about an hour or one Saturday afternoon. Tell me what you think there. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Now, again, I don't want to break the law. I'm not saying you should, but 
I'm not so scared of this new FCC regulation where everything has to be locked down now. I think the, I think a lot of the Chinese manufacturers are going to come along and say, okay, we'll lock them to the ham bands, sell them to you, and then we'll put instructions online about how to an unlock them, which is exactly what you can do with a Kenwood or Yezu or Icom radio. There's Mars mod. They call it Mars mods. There's Mars mods for the ID5100, for the Kenwood V71A. There's Mars mods for the FTM400 and FTM100 Yezu radios. You can Mars mod anything to make it full open transmit. They just can't sell it to you that way. Okay. I personally think individual responsibility is a lot more important than making a bunch of stupid laws and rules and regulations about what I can and can't do. I know what I can and can't do, and I don't go outside of that policy, okay, unless there's an emergency, and then any form of communication necessary is allowable in an emergency. That's one of the test questions on the technician pool for the amateur radio exam. Thanks for watching, guys. That was my die trade and my rant at the end of this video. <laughs> but, hey, I love doing it. So thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, click on the subscribe button below. Check out a couple more uh, videos here and there. And uh, 73, you guys have a good one.